Certainly an exciting matchup. There is so much expectation in the air at the moment. Everyone's kind of crowding around at the moment. It's all quiet because we're about to get underway here. F2 Techs, number one in the world on the Xbox, dominating for the majority of the season. is going up against the man who would love to dethrone him to make his way towards a historic run to the E-World Cup final. It is, of course, that man, Kurt. And there's a reason why F2 Tex is the number one in the world. Consistency throughout the entire season. He's looked phenomenal in every single aspect of his game, from defense to offense, from goalkeeper movement to finishing. It's all there in one incredible package. But there's something about Kurt's gameplay at this tournament which has been exciting, it's been fluid, it's been fun to watch. And if he can bring that to his game, he might be able to get through Tex here. I think you could have just said there's something about Kurt, there's something about this young man that just means that you can never count him out of any situation, even the one that he, he finds himself in. He said himself, you heard the quote on the couch before this game got underway. If I hadn't got suspended, I'd be number one in the world, and I'm sure F2 Tech would have had something to say about that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if he wants to prove that statement true, then a victory here is what he needs, and then a couple of victories more to qualify for that E-World Cup. It's certainly not going to be an easy task, but... He's done it before. He is a player who has reached the heights in these tournaments. Of course, he only lost out to MS Tassari in the Xbox final last year's World Cup. So now we'll see whether maybe, just maybe, he can make his way to another one. Well, no real chances to report early in this game. It's kind of been both players feeling each other out. However, possession has certainly been on the side of Kurt. He looks like a little through ball to try and find R9. And I must say, Dan, from what I've seen so far of F2 Tex in this tournament, there's been a slightly more reserved feel to his gameplay. Taking a few less risks than we're used to seeing. And now you can see Kurt trying to orchestrate an attack of his own. Vieira, unfortunately, cannot find that ball out wide. And Danny da Costa is going to nip in now and start the attack here for Tex. I mean, Tex has only conceded eight goals in the six matches that he's played, so that's 12 games of FIFA, only conceding eight goals. You can tell he's gone and he's worked on his defence to make sure he doesn't have any vulnerabilities, he doesn't have any weaknesses, because every single tournament, people target Tex. They watch his gameplay. How can I play like Tex? How can I beat Tex? Well, he just changes his game style every single tournament to surprise us, and that's why he's the best in the world. But at the moment, Kurt's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. We've not seen any real chances on either side. And here is that quick pass in here from Kurt. Almost finds the ball around the corner there. To Kylian Mbappe, who was making that overlapping run. Tex defending well, though. Both players so far watertight at the back. And I think you're going to have to be as well, and you're going to have to in these opening stages. Just try and get a feel of your opponent. Even though they may have played each other in FIFA 18, FIFA 19 is entirely a different beast. Here's Ronaldo. Mbappe just shows too much of that to Rude Hullet. Which allows Tex to get back in and make that tackle. And now Danny da Costa can pick up the ball. It's a Patrick Vieira. And again, this slow, measured approach here from F2 Tex. And it's not like to get here as well. Kurt hasn't already faced some incredible players on his way. He knocked out Megabit, who of course was ranked fourth in the rankings prior to this tournament. So he knows how to get the job done against these big players, and he even credited Megabit and said, God, he plays such good FIFA as well. It was a pleasure to play against him, and almost he didn't enjoy knocking him out of the tournament. But I'm sure there would be something about knocking the number one in the world out of the tournament that he would enjoy. 27 minutes gone now in this first leg. Still no shot on target from either player. <laughs> at this stage. Maybe Kurt will be the first one here to pull the trigger and test the goalkeeper. Neymar. Vieira steps in, though. And it's been fascinating to me so far, Dan, that neither player has really even managed to get the ball inside that 18-yard box. It's been a real midfield battle so far. Well, I'm sure you're probably watching and you saw Kurt on the edge of the box there and you're thinking, why not just have a cross in there, go for an attempt at maybe a back post header. Kurt is resilient with how he wants to play FIFA. He wants to play that smooth passing style. Well, maybe Tex might be able to take advantage of that. Neymar with the drag back. Little half drag back into the scoop turn. This is where the young man is so, so dangerous. Vieira gets a piece of it. Mbappe with the fake shot, the drag back. Oh, it's beautiful. The McGinney's been almost found the space. But again, 
Resolute defending there from Kurt, and now the counter-attack is on. Yeah, Kurt just wants to find these opportunities where Tex is vulnerable at the back, when he's been attacking, when the counter-attack is available. And the foul is called there as well onto Vieira, so a chance for Kurt. And if you remember, against Megabit, it was off-stream, but the VOD is available. He did score a free kick from this range against Megabit. It was just a little layoff, and then a driven shot from quite some distance. Well, let's see what Kurt's got up his sleeve here. See if he can take advantage of this situation. CR7, Kroketa's past one. He goes past two! And just like that, he beats the goalkeeper and Kurt takes the lead. And Kurt ever so slightly pushes Texas back against the wall. There's been so many mind games leading up to this tournament and this particular game. I heard them talking to each other and Kurt was saying to Tex, ah, you're nervous, aren't you? And Tex was like, no, no, I'm not nervous. And, and Kurt's saying, oh, you're just going to have to use like all the meta kind of ways to finish. And Tex is like, no, I can just play normal FIFA and beat you. So I wonder how much that is in Tex's head. Is he going to try beat Kurt at his own game by trying to get these, so these nice, beautiful goals? Or are we going to see some more traditional style of FIFA 19 goals using those meta goals, maybe some crosses to the back post? It's really going to see how that develops across this game. Fascinating understory to this incredible matchup. But first blood goes to Kurt. He said himself, if I was here all season, I'd be number one. And if you can take down the number one, I mean, who can really argue with you, to be honest with you? Hullet, though, coming forward for Tex. Looking to answer back straight away here. Hullet into CR7! And you can't take your eyes off this one, ladies and gents. And I really think those are the goals that we were hoping for in the early stages of this match, because now it is going to open up. It is going to get a little bit explosive, a little bit fiery between these two. And it was a very subtle reaction from Tex, but you knew how much that meant for him to just get one on the board, to give him that little bit of confidence and belief of, yes, I am the best in the world. I can answer back. And we really do have a game on our hands. There's just something about this game. You can feel it in the air here in Hamburg. And I'm sure that everyone watching at home is on the edge of their seats, much like the players themselves are. The 1-1 one -one now, just before half-time. And it has been a tight affair between the two. And to be honest with you, Dan, it's only really been one chance each, and they've both been buried. Yeah, both players playing very well in the middle of the park, keeping possession and very reluctant to give away possession in any dangerous areas. Otherwise, they know that one little mistake, an opponent like one of these, they are going to be able to pounce on that. So you have to make sure you have zero mistakes. As the halftime whistle goes, a very cagey first half, and maybe we should have expected it between two players who know what's on the line and arguably more pressure on Tex, in my opinion, because Kurt has nothing to lose at this point. He's already achieved so much this tournament. He's already so close to his goals. He's already proven the points that he wants to prove. But for Tex, he's number one in the world. Everyone's got his eyes on him saying, can you beat someone who came into this tournament ranked 55th? I'm actually going to disagree with you for just a second here because I think that every single round that Kurt gets through, those goals change. Yes, he's like, I'm happy to be here. But once you get yourself into this position that he's in right now, to go up against the best in the world, and you can almost taste how sweet that victory would be to get to that E-World Cup final. I think that's what's in his head right now. I think that just competing here isn't enough for him now. I think if he falls here at this hurdle when being so close, well, he'll want to rerun, put it that way. But I think that's what makes this matchup so special as we have two players who want to win not just this particular game, but the entire tournament. They are born champions. They have the possibility to win tournaments. And maybe the winner of this can go on to win the entire thing. Second half underway then. 1-1. One, one. A game of few chances, but a game of clinical finishing from both players. Here's Neymar then for Kurt. There was a little bit of a space that opened up just in front of him there. You can see Mbappe coming short from that right-hand side, just being called in by Kurt. And now you can see Kurt just trying to manipulate the midfield. So many players deep here for F2 Tex. Well, that's going to allow Kurt to find one of Tex's defenders with that pass. But quite surprising to see Ke uh, Tex actually playing quite so deep. Yeah, and I think both of them, they, it's just because of the situation and because of the magnitude of this match that they are going to be playing deep, they are going to be playing safe in this first leg. I'm expecting it to open up as this leg goes on and especially as we transition into leg number two. 
But what I'm impressed about is Kurt having that resilience in the midfield, not to play too many risky balls and instead being very patient. Well, here's a bad pay for Tex. The cricket gets past one. CR7 dragged back. Ramos makes a good tackle. Just in the nick of time there. And now Kurt can counter attack. And Kurt's so dangerous when he's moving the ball forward quickly. But Van Dyke, the Liverpool captain, wins the ball back for the huge Liverpool fan. I mean, phenomenal defence on both sides, to be honest. I can't stress enough how difficult it is to defend against Tex when he gets into that box, when he starts using all those skill moves. But the same can be said on that counter-attack. CR7 with a croquetta. There's a scoop turn. A little bit of space just opened up. And you saw a little bit of a grimace on the face of Tex there. He actually greened that, but... So obviously, I think it struck one of his players on the way through and just gone out for a goal kick, but a moment of danger there for Kurt, and he survives. I mean, sometimes when you get into that position and you manage to actually pull off a green shot, you expect it to at least uh, challenge the goalkeeper, but of course, the balance of the player and the positioning is going to make a little bit of a difference there as well. But most importantly for Kurt is he's still very much in this game his and still off. looks very threatening going forward. He does indeed. And Mbappe here has found a fantastic ball across. Ronaldo Neymar falls back to all nine. Hold on, on the orthodox save there from Edwin van der Sar was enough to keep Kurt at bay, but from the corner, maybe there's another chance here. Second one in a row. Neymar now. Dispossessed by Neymar. And you have to say that was a... A worrying moment there for F2 Tex. It was worrying, but you say it was an unorthodox save. He did move the goalkeeper. He did recognise that second opportunity was a possibility. And it was just a subtle bit of goalkeeper movement to ensure that it wasn't going to be an easy finish for Kurt. Kurt didn't read it the right way of which way to put it with Ronaldo. And that's why we're still tied up here. But it's a lot of these subtle differences that are really going to make or break this tournament. And for Kurt, this season for him. And I just wonder, looking at how F2 Tex is set up in this game, Dan. He's playing so deep. You can see here every single player of his is in his own half. Do you think that's deliberately set up to counter-attack this way that Kurt likes to play? I almost think he's encouraging Kurt to come at him because one thing that Tex is good at doing is exploiting people once they've attacked him, once he's able to actually get the ball back and go on that counter-attack. So he's saying, I'll give you the ball. You can have the possession. I'll wait for you to make a mistake. There's one. Unfortunately, he's not quite able to capitalize off it. And for Kurt, this is all about concentration. It's all about breaking down the wall of Tex, which is a switch up in his normal game style. We usually know him for his high pressing gameplay and the way that he loves to win the ball back and attack with pace and speed. But this time, I think he's just showing quite a lot of respect to his opponent. I'm sure there is a lot of respect between the two players. Regardless of what Kurt might say, as if he should be the number one, I think he knows what an impressive season Tex has had and how, uh, how strong he's been from day one, really, when we saw him back in Bucharest all those months ago, back in November when he won that first foot Champions Cup, and then he just kept on winning. Lovely little run from Neymar here. He's going to give Ronaldo an option. And Kurt is slowly creeping his way up the pitch, inch by inch, to Costa. After the ball is one back for Tex, though, he's going to start an attack. And again, it's a slow, methodical build-up this time from F2 Tex. And here's the acceleration from Kylian Mbappe. Tries to look for that driven ball back across goal. And Kurt defends well. And again, with 10 minutes left here, Dan, no chance for F2 Tex really in this second half. It's been Kurt who's controlled the possession. And a free kick will be given here. Maybe it'll be a set piece that can separate these two players. Another set piece for Kurt. Of course, that's how he got his first goal and he has scored a few this tournament. Maybe not from this kind of area. Let's see what he has to offer. Pull it then. Into Neymar. Gets a little bit fortunate with that bounce back. And you can see again Kurt just looking for a, a little reverse pass back into that runner. Takes it short again. Neymar. Using those phenomenal dribbling statistics to keep the ball close to his feet. But F2 Tex has won it here. And again, decides to build from the back. And now a fantastic ball over the top here from Da Costa. And Bappe's doing all he can, using all of his pace and speed to keep up with that ball and keep it in play. Pull it now. Into Neymar. Things looking dangerous here. Two Elasticos! And a left-footed finish to match! 
It's been slow. It's been methodical. But when he gets in that 18-yard box, boy, is he exciting to watch. And Texas looked somewhat uncharacteristic through this game. He hasn't been going for the normal ways we've seen people score in this event. He almost wants to beat Curtis' own game, and that was a beautiful goal as well. A couple of elasticos, some drag backs to, to boot, and a finish that I'm sure he's going to be proud of. And now he takes the lead. Now he has the advantage. And we're only a couple of minutes away from ending this first leg. And I think there's something to, even more to deep dive into. He's known for that triple elastico. After two, I think Kurt maybe even was expecting the third. But no, he changed it up. He went for a little fake shot instead just to create that angle for the shot and have it done so, Dan. The finish, sublime. And now we're into stoppage time and Tex has possession. He has possession and I'm sure he'll ensure he has the last attack, which he does. Touch from Neymar inside the box. Maybe a chance here for CR7 to add a third. Wins the ball back and Bappe De Gea has to make the save. And Kurt's got to be careful here right at the defter. Not going to that second leg with a two goal difference between him and the world number one. And the final whistle will go in the first leg and it's f2 tex who takes the lead into the break kurt though put up an incredible fight and is still very much in this quarter final and i'm very excited to see what unfolds in leg number two yeah just taking a second here you can see f2 tex is disappearing into the background just a little reminder for you guys that the fifa 19 global series xbox one playoffs are brought to you in part by turtle beach be sure to follow at turtle beach on twitter and of course, stay tuned for the unique hashtag that you can tweet for your chance to win one of those beautiful Elite Pro 2 headsets. How sleek are they? They are pretty sleek. I'm going to have to find out that unique hashtag, so I might be able to grab one myself. But I mean, we have had a pretty incredible first leg. It was very slow to start with. There was a lot of build-up involved, and I do feel like Tex is playing very differently, but he's still winning, and that's what's important. It's going to be what changes now going into leg number two. Is Tex going to carry on just this kind of sitting back, defending, hoping Kurt makes mistakes? Because he has the lead now. He can't afford to play that way. I just find it fascinating, the tactical battle, to be honest with you. You know, we're so used to seeing F2 Tex come out with this high press, with this aggressive defending style. There's nothing but respect, I think, between these two players. And the way that Tex is playing so deep. You can see when Kurt has possession of the ball with Vieira and Hullet, both of his central midfielders, just inside his own half, every single player from Texas behind the ball. And do you have you have to give some credit maybe to his coach here who's, you know, recognized, and Texas obviously recognized this as well. He's a little bit vulnerable in these first legs. He was saying himself, he goes down 0-2 sometimes, makes life hard for himself. I think he's just trying to minimize risk. I mean, we were saying about Enzo's coach book and how much is that book worth? Is it worth the 75 grand of winning this tournament? We have seen Tex change since he did change coaches, since he did bring Enzo in. And I think that he's developed as a player. Not only has he matured in age throughout this, this season, but also as a player as well. And he, he's worked on those aspects where he has showed vulnerabilities. For example, his fullbacks in particular, I don't know if you remember back in events like Bucharest, etc. He'd bring his fullbacks very high and aggressively up the pitch to try and win the ball in those areas to get high scoring games but now he's more than happy to sit back and win the ball back in his own half and then just play a passing game to get up the pitch instead well, let's take a look at some of the best moments of that match to see if we can see some of these tactics in effect there wasn't too many huge moments Dan as far as you know chances creation was concerned but I mean, how clinical both players were in front of goal was something that certainly stood out for me. I mean, honestly, we could make a replay package of actually the defensive work that both of these players put in and how well Kurt was able to defend against Tex in the box with all his drag backs and his skill moves. He was very good at pressuring in the right areas, player switching when he needed to. But you can say the same about Tex. As soon as Kurt was on a counter attack or trying to break away down either of the wings, Tex was making sure he was ensuring that he was switching those players, he was tracking those runs, making it very difficult for Kurt to play those one-two passing moves that we know he loves so much. You can see there was a, a huge chance there for Kurt, and I think he just missed that green timing, unfortunately, which might have cost him the opportunity to potentially take the lead, but this is just superb. That little one there, that little fake shot, I think the Tex knew exactly what he was doing. I mean, it, the, the signature three Elasticos has kind of been 
his move when it came into FIFA 19, when we saw it happen at one time and everyone was just like, wow, this is incredible, the fact he's been able to do this. So maybe you're right, maybe there were some mind games in there saying, maybe this is expected. 200 IQ. So I'm going to try and do something a little bit different. Well, uh, for you guys at home as well, if you're not in enjoying the gameplay, I'm not sure why that would be, but this is something you certainly can enjoy. If you're watching right now, you can link your Twitch and EA accounts and look at what is available right now. A Yasebio prime icon moments for I am. You see it in all of the pros team, whether starting or coming off of the bench as a super sub, one of the best finishers on the game, Dan. Yeah, I mean, a lot of pros are actually using him over R9 now instead because they just feel like he's a more consistent finisher. But there you can see the pictures on your screen, the coaches just having words. Of course, we, we've spoken about Enzo, but we've also got Shells coaching Kurt there. This has been something that has been phenomenal, I think, for him, this event. Shells has been one of the players and will be one of the players to watch out for when it comes to the PlayStation playoffs next weekend. But I really think he's added something to Kurt's game. I think, uh, speaking to Kurt yesterday as well, he was saying that he needs someone there to just keep his head in the game at times. You know, he knows himself. He could be a bit of a hothead if things don't go his way. And Shells is one of those, you know, uh, you know, unflappable characters where he doesn't get wound up. He stays very calm. He has a, a very chilled, you know, demeanor about him as a person away from FIFA as well. So a smart choice, I think, from Kurt. Not only someone that he gets alongside with, but also someone that understands his personality and kind of contradicts that. Yeah, we've spoken about how different players require different coaches and Kurt isn't a player who needs someone to be his hype man you don't need someone gassing him up from behind he can do that himself he has that energy but to calm him down that's definitely what you need we've seen players lose their heads before and they just play awful because of it headsets on you can feel the tension right now between these two if you're just joining us f2 text takes a one goal advantage into our second leg you can hear the noise in the background we're about to get back underway can Kurt turn this one around and keep his incredible run at this tournament going I mean the answer is yes he can turn this around he has the possibility to do so he showed enough pressure in that first leg he showed enough domination with possession it just needs to be in front of goal he needs to get those chances he needs that final ball to get past Tex's final man and maybe he needs to rely on a mistake from Tex because Tex has defended very well so far well it's Tex with possession from the restart here such a dangerous situation little five-star combo the drag back very, very well defended there by Kurt. And the thing is, when Tex starts throwing all of the tricks at you, you got to focus and you got to make sure when that chance comes to make that one tackle, you have to nail it. I mean, so many players in that situation would have panicked when Tex was doing all those skill moves towards you, but Kurt very focused and wasn't going to allow it to face him. A little cricketa variation there from Kurt. And again, it's Virgil van Dijk who wins the ball back. And we're yet to see that quick passing in and around the box from Kurt. And I think it's just this deep-lying defensive line from Tex that's really just kind of squeezing the space within that 18-yard box and kind of stifling Kurt's way of going forward. Yeah, Kurt loves the one-touch football, very fast one-touch football. And it's not easy when Tex is player switching so successfully and he's pressuring in those right areas. He's almost frustrating Kurt in that final third. But Kurt is very much intelligent enough and a good FIFA player enough to try something different and to to find a workaround. He's very good at finding players' weaknesses, and I'm sure he's going to do that. And this is the first time that we've really seen a little bit of space just momentarily there between Hullet Vieira and those centre-backs. Kurt couldn't quite exploit it, but he still has control of the ball here, and Neymar's going to get a little bit unfortunate there as the ball ricochets back off of the defender, and it will be a goal kick, and you have to give credit again to the way that Texas defended it. The thing is, can he hold on throughout the entirety of this game? He said that he's worked on his game and he can close games out now when he has a goal lead with just like 20 minutes remaining in game but there's a little bit more time than that i feel like tex is going to need another goal in this game to really secure it i would not feel comfortable 2-1 up against kurt going into the late stages of any tie tex comes forward again then here's neymar five star skills goes for the shot across goal doesn't hit the green timing and De Gea will beat that one behind for a corner Whip straight into the box, CR7's there, Vieira gets there first, Ronaldo on the follow-up, great handling from the goalkeeper here. And Kurt survives that wave of pressure from F2 Tex. And you can see the difference in styles as well, especially from set pieces, especially from corners. Tex very much just wanting to take advantage of the height of Cristiano Ronaldo in the centre of that box, but he's not actually been able to get anything from it. On the other side for Kurt, he's been playing it short to the likes of Neymar, trying to dribble his way in from those corners and not going for those headers. And that's where we're seeing the slight disparities between the two. 
Another thing to note here is I'm pretty sure that F2 Tex has his fullbacks on stay back while attacking as well. You see, they're not making any overlapping runs, and he's relying on the likes of Neymar and Mbappe to attack those fullback areas. So the counter attack kind of gets stifled if you have those players staying back to cover that space. And again, got to give credit potentially here to Enzo, his coach, and what's in that little red playbook. I think when you notice that certain players are starting to play long through balls over the top of your fullbacks, you have to just say, all right, well, I, I'm going to have to cut out a little bit of the attacking prowess out of my game and make Put your sure... Put pride away a little bit. You have to, because it doesn't matter if you win 6-0, 7-0, or 1-0, 2-0, as long as you get the W. Uh, we'll have a throw in here in his own third of the pitch. He can build from the back. Again, just that little flurry of activity near Kurt's goal from F2 Tex to report in this game. And what has been a game of few chances just means when that chance comes along, which we know it will, you've got to be deadly. Here's Ronaldo. CR7 back into R9. Danger here for Tex. Kurt looking for that extra pass. You really can see if he gets one of those passes off, he's going to have a clear-cut chance and a chance to equalise here. And it's one of those strange moments in the game where Tex is going to be more than happy for Kurt to be holding the ball in his own half and building it up slowly. But if then Kurt is able to secure a goal later in the game, Tex might be thinking, ah, maybe I should have been attacking a little bit more, maybe I should have gone for that third goal. So I'm sure that indecisiveness is going to be in his head right now, and maybe something he's going to be looking towards his coach to try and give him a little bit of advice. Well, that was a great ball there from Mbappe, but a fantastic player switch there at the last second from Kurt. He recognised that pass. And the potential that that could have unlocked on the attack there for F2 Tex. Unfortunately, though, for Tex for uh, Kurt, excuse me. That pass does not find its target. A simple one inside. As I say that, he's got a little bit of fortune going his way as the ball just runs out of play. And I do think as we go into the second half of this second leg, Kurt is going to amp up the pressure a little bit and we're going to see a little bit more speed to his build-up because he knows he's running out of time. Well, Hullet's here on the edge of the box and he takes a strike, but he gets it all wrong. Uh, just a touch of frustration there and you can understand that, to be honest. Having worked so hard to create that chance to not make the most of it. Frustration is naturally going to occur as well when you're playing against someone with such a deep line like Tex is because you have all this possession, but you don't have much to show with it. Because whenever you get into that final third, Tex does step up. He moves his players into the right position. He switches accordingly, and therefore you lose the ball and all that possession does come to nothing. So I would be frustrated too. And that is going to be a yellow card for Virgil van Dijk as well. So you have to be careful and make sure it's not a red. You don't want to be playing with 10 men in a match of this magnitude. Half-time whistle on the horizon. And the situation is ex exactly the same as it was when we kicked off this second leg. Kurt still needs a goal to tie this up on aggregate. And Tech still playing as intelligently as ever. Making Kurt work so hard frustrating him, grinding him down. And going back to something that Spencer Owen was saying during a commentary stint yesterday. You earn this right, if you can take the lead, to play with this style, to grind down your opponent. As Mbappe now finds Neymar, just like that! Tex bursts into life again. 3-1 now on aggregate. And that really did just come out of nowhere. Right before the half as well. That's going to be so difficult for Kurt. Going into the next 45. Now there's that two-goal cushion for Tex. It was already hard enough with Tex holding the ball, with having that deep line. He's going to be able to be even more patient and encourage Kurt to come at him even more into this second half. And of course, it's not just about these two players. It's not just about Kurt trying to qualify for the E-World Cup. There's people watching on. Ebinio, for example, currently sits in 16th in the E-World Cup qualification. And he'll be hoping that Tex wins so that Kurt can't take his spot. That's so, so true. So many implications still. And I want to talk a little bit about Tex's game management because we obviously had a quote from him uh, that we read yesterday as well. But it's a perfect example of what he's doing here. The maturity you were talking about, Dan. F2 Tex is just doing it all right now. Yeah, he is. And I think that without this, if he didn't have this mentality, if he was just like a young kid assuming, oh, I'm the best, I don't need to improve in my areas, I can slap people 7-0, 8-0, we probably would have seen him struggle as the season went on. I mean, if we go all the way back to the start of the season when we had a very different meta in FIFA 19, 
Tex was one of the first people to adopt the long range finesse shots and it was honestly quite amazing to watch how quickly he adapted to that. And then there was a lot of questions asked. How was it going to change when the meta was developed, when those patches came in and people said Tex is just a pre-patch kid? He went on to win more events. He adapted. He learned. He's a very, very intelligent young man. And I think we have to give him so much credit for what he's done this year. However, he hasn't finished the job yet. 45 minutes left for Kurt to keep the dream alive. Can he find two goals here? Against a man who is barely conceding goals at all in this tournament so far. I mean, the most goals that Tex has conceded in any one match has been three. So Kurt would have to almost break a tournament record if he wants to get back in this game and take this game away from Tex. Maybe Tex might have the first chance of this second half here. A little half drag back here, and Mbappe. There's the extended version, the greatest hits, if you like, from Tex. Corner. So the young man now whips this one straight in. CR7 is there. Kurt works hard to battle to get that header away. Tex, again, Dumfries this time up to win the header. And maybe, just maybe, there's a chance on the counter-attack. And Kurt needs to up the pace a little bit, and I'm sure he knows that at this point because he has been slow at building up, and every right to. Sometimes it works very successfully. But now you're two goals down. You need to just inject a little bit more speed into your game, and that's exactly why you see these quick, short passes. And that was a good through ball. But unfortunately, the run just wasn't quite there, and Tex stepped up with Virgil van Dijk. That was absolutely brilliant defending there from F2 Tex. The baiting with the player switching, Tech, uh, I mean, excuse me, Kurt thought that that ball was on. He thought it was on. He deliberately dragged a player out of position and then used Virgil van Dijk to actually come across and cut that pass out. The little things that you don't notice sometimes are the things that change games, and that's winning the ball back, and we all know how much possession is important to creating those chances and closing out games especially. Well, here's Hullet for Tex coming forward. He's done it at the back now. Can he do it going forward? CR7 battles to keep hold of that ball once more. Mbappe, chance to strike it! Straight at the goalkeeper. And I'm sure it's going to be the same of aiming for Cristiano Ronaldo here, but De Gea is able to punch it away, and quite importantly so, you've got to feel a fourth goal would be that final Great nail turn. in the coffin. Oh, this has got to be, and he gets there first! F2 Tex! It doesn't matter how many times you question him. He finds a way to break you down, and it's Patrick Vieira who beats the Superman attempt from David De Gea to surely have closed this one out. And of course, frustration is going to start to kick in a little bit now. Not much Kirk could have done otherwise. Probably hoped David De Gea would have saved that one, but regardless, Tex has a three-goal lead now and makes this definitely a mountain to climb for Kirk. It's been such an incredible tournament for him so far. Maybe Tex is just one too many opponents. And maybe Kurt's season might be coming to an end, unless he can find a comeback soon. Well, Vieira's found Neymar now, turns back inside. And again, just a little deflection off the player there means that F2 Tex will win the ball back once more. Slow and methodical once more. You can see now a little change maybe here from Kurt. A little bit more pressure higher up the pitch. Yeah, he's probably going to be switching to constant pressure. He's going to be using the RB button and the A buttons to try and drag those players to make sure that Tex doesn't have it easy. Mbappe, though, looking to get the ball across. Van Dijk will get there first. Had to be careful there, Kurt. But he did the job well. Mbappe into Eusebio. He finds R9. R9 gets absolutely dispossessed, though by Sergio Ramos, but he battles back here for Kurt. The players want it. And you know Kurt still believes in himself here. Eusebio back to Neymar, into R9. Oh. It's magical from Kurt! And is that the spot that he needs? There's plenty of time left. We saw what happened against Megabet. We saw the comeback that he was able to come through. And now that will give him the confidence going into the final at 20 minutes of this game. And it was a beautiful goal as well. But that's only the start. He still needs two more just to make it a draw. But you know it's within him. You know there is that possibility. Does Tex know? Three goals seem like the impossible task. Two goals, however. Well, very different situation here. 
And things just got very, very interesting. Tex taking a few seconds here to slow the momentum down, potentially. Maybe it's Kurt making some tactical changes. But the pressure now has shifted. Kurt's got nothing to lose. He's never had anything to lose at this tournament. But in this situation, he's just got to throw absolutely everything at Tex. And there's no doubt when you are in a situation where you're leading by three goals, you're playing so comfortably, you think that you're pretty much guaranteed getting into that next round. As soon as that goal is scored, there is that little thought in the back of your mind, that little devil on your shoulder saying, well, what if you did throw this game away? And I'm sure Tex will be trying to ignore that right now, and he will be focusing up. Well, Kurt's got to focus up as well here, because it will be possession in the hands of Tex from the restart. He needs to make sure that he doesn't leave himself vulnerable. Still time here. The real question is, can Tex find a... Excuse me, Kurt find a way to take the ball back off of Tex here? Can he close that space down? Can he stop this gameplay? that has served Tex so well so far in this game. And obviously he needs two attacks to score two goals, and there is time for those two attacks, but initially he needs to win this ball back from this kickoff. Strike from distance. Oh! Kurt can't believe it. I can't believe it. I mean, out of nowhere, that goal should be enough to kill off Kurt's season. Tex saw the space, he drove himself into that space, and Neymar's let one fly from the outside of the box, and that's what you get when you have a foot item with that much statistics. He can just bash him in. And I think he might have bashed his way into a semi-final here. Goal for the visitors. The playbook has been put down. Just do what you do, Tex. It's very simple now, it's defend, win the ball back, and hold the ball. Go into the corner if you have to, or do you go for the victory lap? I think there's too much respect between these two players to see any of Tex. His usual antics are the likes of bringing on Steven Gerrard, for example. I don't think we're going to be seeing anything like that. But Tex has answered the critics. And he's shown why he's number one in the world here today. Tex, ooh, tried to look for a little sombrero flick over his head there. Maybe he is trying to entertain. We were saying, Kurt's the entertainer so far at this tournament. We must remember some of the special things that F2 Tex has done so far this season as well. Time not on the side of Kurt here. Needs to pretty much score with this attack to give himself a chance. Eusebio, pull it, stick it to his man. Eusebio still going, back to Vieira now, and there is a penalty. Well, well, well. Hullet steps up, and he scores! Back to the two-goal difference. Sure. And back to Kurt being within striking distance. Surely not. Surely there's not enough time. But again, that little devil on your shoulder is going to be saying, come on, don't throw this one away. Keep this ball from the restart here. Hold on to possession. Kurt's headphones are off. Maybe he thinks that it's too late. Only five minutes left, plus stoppage time. You need to win the ball back ASAP. And then you've got to win the ball back again from another restart. Kurt fans who are watching, it. give him your energy. Push his players forward, do everything you can, support your man. If he wants to get back into this. F2 Tex though again, showing why he has so many Global Series points, so many tournament wins this year. It quite simply doesn't matter what you throw in front of him, he has an answer for anything. Kurt wins it back though, and Mbappe might have a chance to go forward. Mbappe, ball rolls away. Slightly desperate tackle there from Tex. Vieira now, massive chance for Neymar, for Kurt! Oh, can you believe it? He's found a way! I just think it's too late, and I think Kurt thinks it's too late. And he's saying, where were these goals earlier when I needed them? 
He's got less than three minutes in stoppage time. Tex has the kickoff as well, so he can hold the ball. He can play it back to his defenders. Kurt just has to throw everything forward and win this ball back. It's a very difficult task, but if he gets one more attack, there is a possibility of him getting back into this game. And what a comeback it would be. Onwards, forward. Press the ball. Try and win it back. You have to put Tex under pressure. The only problem is the clock is against him. He's out of time. But what a valiant performance it was. Kurt threw everything at Tex. But at the end of the day, Tex stands tall. Last year's Xbox runner-up at the World Cup, eliminated from the competition.